Hello and welcome to Downtime Podcast episode 177. How are you doing, Elisa? I am doing fabulous. It is fall. We are back at school and it is a hot janitor fall in Lost Judgment right now. <laughs> yes, yes it is, Elisa. Yes it is. Um are we just gonna go right into judgment? Because I'm okay with that's that. Okay. I, that's okay. That's totally. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> judgment came out last week, um, and. It's the first time that Ryuga Gotoku Studios is doing a global release, um, meaning that they're releasing the game in Japan at the same time they're re- releasing it in other territories as well. Because typically they release it in Japan first, and then there's lead time where they, where the, the uh, translators have to translate the game and uh, make sure all the subtitles are correct and make sure that all the cultural notes are correct. Uh, but this time they jumped ahead and they actually made it concurrent with the release of the Japanese game, and I think that's awesome. I have missed the Brawler style in the Yakuza mainline series, but I am happy it is here in Lost Judgment. I am only on Chapter 2 so far as of the the recording of this podcast, but I love it. I love it so, so much. Um, There's a lot of things I want to say about it, but uh, I'll, I'll ask you in a second, but overall I will say that... Um, it is, it is exactly what I needed at this time. Um, and <laughs> it, this is the only thing I can think about. Like, I, I feel like I'm getting Yakuza Zero vibes, not from the game itself, but from, from just playing this and being like, I'm invested in this story. Like, like I am 100% into the story, into the characters. I'm like, oh my God, I want more. Oh. But Elisa, tell me your thoughts. Okay, so as of right now, I am at the... I, I finished chapter three, and so we're right at the recap of chapter four on my play as of this podcast. So about the whole story, uh, let me just say this real quick. Um, So first of all, as as we all know with any Yakuza game, you go through a pretty long tutorial. And the t- you know, the tutorial is just like 30 minutes. Like they introduce the mechanics of... Um, sneaking around and um, following people and whatnot. But you get this, after you pass that tutorial, you get this very riveting story. And this is why I think Lost Judgment in part... So this is why the Judgment series is different, but particularly Lost Judgment is a much more compelling... I think might be a more compelling story than any of the franchise so far. So, by default, being a Judgment game... This story is going to have gangs. Yeah, we're in, you know, we're we're in a Jincho, so we're going to probably deal with the Yakuza at some point. We're probably going to deal with the Liumang at some point. Um, Just like all of the gangs that are in the Jincho area are, we're, it's going to be intertwined in the story. But what makes this different is the driving force and the theme of bullying, in my opinion, making this one of the more realistic storylines of the game when i'm playing through this story and th- this is a, this is a real topic that like because bullying first of all is is bad and as we all know um but bullying the way that it happens in asia is very different from the way bullying happens in um i guess like as you call the western countries and whatnot yeah yeah and just see like you know just seeing it like Obviously, this is going to be dramatized in some way because it's a video game and it's entertainment. But this is that it's that is really how bullying is a lot of the times. And I'm so compelled by this story and Coda. For anyone who's seen the trailer, you don't even have to have played the chapters yet. But um, there's a man who dies and his name's Mikoshiba. And then there's a guy on stand and his name is uh, Ehara Akihiro. And... He's he's on stand for something else, but how that storyline gets intertwined with like his son who committed suicide and the and bullying and everything is just uh, is just very fascinating. So I I'm I'm very much enjoying this storyline because it although we know at some point it's going to jump the shark 
um, with Yakuza reasons, of course. I feel like it's very grounded in a real topic. Yeah, it's something that everybody can, like, relate to um, on a lot of levels. And that's also why I really liked it. Um, I like the story so far, I mean. And it's crazy how much, like, everything is connected as well. Um, I thought... You know, in the beginning, I was like, wow, how is this all going to... Well, why does he end up at high school, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what, like, that's what everyone oh, was wondering. Yeah, and now I'm just like, oh... Yes. You know, <laughs> it's just like, Like, okay. oh, that's it. Yeah, like, all right, that's the reason. Yeah. Okay, I am I am down for yes. this. So I'm hooked. Yeah, I... Yeah, I am. I'm excited for what happens next. And I do also like I really like that theme of bullying uh, in the story because I think that it it is something that everyone can kind of understand, like very basically. And I'm not trying I'm not trying to say like it's it is a basic story. I'm trying to say like it, it's a it's an it's a concept that everybody should understand and yes, and f- should find ways to fix and to um uh to help out one another so yeah i i enjoy it i i've enjoyed i'm enjoying it so far is what i'm trying to say me too um yeah like it just in, just in chapter one alone when when um when the hot boys infiltrate uh serio high school um and we really start getting into um being a bystander and bullying, I was like, "Oh gosh, we're we're cover we're covering a lot of things right now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm already in. I'm already liking this storyline more than Judgment and a lot of like Yakuza stories that have happened so far. Same, yeah. I I'm really liking it too, and uh, I don't know. This one just like I mentioned earlier. This one just feels like so engaging you know and this is this is one of those games where i'm like i'm already sucked in yes and i'm okay with that yes me too (laughs) me too i'm also um i'm also glad that everyone's back (laughs) kaito's back um sugiura and sukumo are back and uh sukumo and them um so we have the yagami detective agency in kamurocho and then Sukumo and Sugiura start their own detective agency in Ijincho called Yokohama 99. And I was like, all right, I'm here. I- I'm here for it. I'm here for the hot boys. But I am missing Toru. I don't know if Toru yeah. is going to come. I hope he makes a cameo because, yes, I need I need um, I need my Toru and um, Kaito bromance back. And it's not. The hot boys without everyone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We need them back. Like, where'd you go? Exactly. So I'm I'm looking forward to how all of that unfolds. And yeah, I think that the just like all of the new characters introduced, like Coda and just like every you know, like just how everything's established. I think this is uh, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm I really want to see where we're gonna go with this. Yes. Now, um, in terms of, because you were talking about the brawler style and how you missed that, um, yeah, I, I very much, when I was playing this game, I was like, man, it, it, you know, turn-based is great, and I think it's because I've just been, I, honestly, Jeremy, I think I've played f- five, like, turn-based games in a row since last, like, since last year, in terms of, like, big, like, big games, and so, th- this being one of the really the first like brawlers in the wild that i've played it's just like wow that man feels good feels good and i like the snakes the new there there's a new style called the snake style and you know mm-hmm. as as everyone knows with this franchise each style is for a different style of combat and but i like the snake one in particular so far i i even use that when I'm not when I'm not fighting people with weapons. <laughs> so um I think it's like it's like it it's enough power, but it's but it's fast enough where it's like kind of the in between of crane and tiger. That's why I like that one. But um mm. yeah, I everything has been groovy so far. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. I don't have much to say 
Um, other than uh, still sad, Don Quixote is not back in Kamurocho. Um, I think that the skateboarding mechanic is cool. Oh man, it, it's so it's so fast. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a slight confession to make too. So I ordered this game to uh, be a physical release, um, and that it would arrive to me. By Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, it's arriving, I think, on Tuesday. Um, and how I'm playing it is I I bought the digital Ultimate Edition. Wait um, wait a minute. Did you know? Did you always know from the beginning that you were going to buy the digital and the physical version? Or because the physical version was delayed, you bought the digital version on Friday? Yes, that's the exact reason. Oh, the second no. one you put. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Because I really wanted to play it and I was committed, and but you know the physical version does not come with all the DLC stuff, so I was literally just buying the base game, and I I bought it from GameStop because GameStop was the only place that was selling um, the Steelbook edition, and I really wanted the Steelbook um, cover. It's great so, too. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I I've now shelled out like a hundred over like over one hundred and fifty dollars for this game. And it's fine. I think I'm getting a lot of content out of this game. I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of things over and over again, as with any Yakuza game. Um, uh, I mean, it's not a problem. It's more of just like a convenience over anything. And now I have a a sealed copy of this game that will come in uh, sometime this week. That's exciting, Um, though. But yeah, yeah. Uh, You're still going to get that um, physical collector edition. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally have every single Yakuza game on uh, on physical release so uh yeah it's fine i think it's totally fine um i just get to add something else to the collection and i think it's cool and you know here's to hoping that they make a sequel to judgment which we can talk about either later or on another podcast but yes um i uh yeah i i bought the digital ultimate edition because i just wanted to get the game quickly and i wanted to um you know, um, be able to uh, play the game on time and play it for the stream and um, just enjoy it without having to worry about the disc. And so, yeah, uh, it came with a bunch of different DLC things. And one of the DLC items is a hoverboard, like not hoverboard in the sense that like the the two wheeled one, but literally back to the future esque floating on the ground hoverboard. And I, I thought that was really cool. That is that's pretty awesome. So I'm assuming that the DLC that's attached to your digital copy is the Detective Essentials pack, and a couple other oh, ones. Oh, so yeah. the School Stories pack is also yes. part of that. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, okay. Because yeah. since I have the physical, then I have to actually like purchase the DLC. So does that mean that Kaito Files is part of your digital? I think so because I think mine also includes the season pass. Ah, okay, okay. So, again. so Kaito files for sure will be included. Yeah, yeah. That's exciting. For sure, for sure. Oh, for and for anyone who doesn't know, the Kaito files is going to be a DLC where Kaito's the playable character, and he's going to have a fun DLC story. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Me that too. because in the past we've in in the Yakuza games you didn't really play anyone else other than. Kiryu, it wasn't until Yakuza 5 when you got to, or Yakuza 4, sorry, when you got to play other characters, um, and then Yakuza 0 happened, and you got to have a full story with Majima, which everyone was, like, a huge fan of. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's cool that they're they're changing it so you can actually be Kaito, because Kaito is the Yakuza connection to the Judgment world, and I think that's really awesome that you can finally play as him and, and you know, beat dudes up with his unique fighting styles as yes. well. Yes. This is, I'm I'm very excited, super exciting stuff. Same. I'm also gonna get the school yeah. stories expansion pack too when that comes. Jeremy. Yeah. So, where I'm at the in this game, I've unlocked the Serio Rabbits Dance Club. I don't even know what that is. The, you so you know um in all of the trailers when you saw, um, Yagami um dancing with a bunch of students. Oh, it's a rhythm game. It is a rhythm game. Ah, uh, that's your thing. That's your thing, Elisa. Oh my gosh. So the first I've unlocked the first two songs. I've already won regionals. I've already like <laughs> I've already like got S level for like the first two songs on normal. <laughs> I'm on, right now I'm working towards 
getting S level on hard, but hard is actually hard. It's uh, they they up the ante for this for this dance game. Wow. But man, what what a fantastic ride that that mini game is. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. You're very close. If you've met, um, what is the, uh, also, what is, um, the girl's name that you met at the bulletin board? The one that's giving you a hard time? Uh. It, it starts with the, with an A. It's like, As- she has a really cool, It's yeah. like Asawama or like, oh, I'm Am- Amasawa, Amasawa. Amasa- yeah, there okay. we go. I was like, Amasawa. Um, yeah. yeah, I, we are, so the place where I stopped at, we're actually on the way to meet them. Oh. <gasps> Yeah, like oh, right before. Like we're going to the gonna, we're going to go meet them. Gonna, yeah, I know. Oh my God, yeah. You're going to meet so, the, the Serial Rabbits Dance Club. Yep. She even says like we're going to go meet the Serial Rabbits Dance Club and I'm like, <gasps> "Okay." And that's where I was like, "Okay, I got to stop because I got to go take care of some stuff." And I ended my stream and I was like, "All right. I when we continue, we'll we'll be back there." So, I will I will be there next time I start streaming that game to say hello to them. Man, I I this is honestly I was trying to finish this um, this mini game last um, last night, like f- like oh, straight wow. up like do like pull a cabaret club and just like do it all at once. But I think that they evenly spaced out the um, the school story to the to at least like part of the main line story. So it's like you have to do some things with the main line story to unlock the next level, which is fine. Um, but yes, it's, it's lit, Jeremy, it's lit. Also, awesome. the, um, the side stories, um, the sub stories that come out of the dance club are hilarious. So I'm, I am looking forward to you playing that game. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Yes. How, how is your streams in general? Um, for Lost Judgment, it's pretty pretty good. Um, a lot of the folks who have jumped in haven't really um, heard of it before, or like they don't really know about the Yakuza series in general. So a lot of it is me kind of explaining why some things are a certain way and why some things look like that. And other parts of it are um, me kind of just talking about Japanese things, like talking about bullying in Asia yes. and Japan, and um, explaining like why there's this group mentality and 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 talking about um like the school structure and like i even had like a little talk like talk about like the shoes they're wearing the wabaki because i've worn those before they were not very comfortable but like it was it was it was just fun like discussing little details like that yes it because because knowing about kind of the like japanese society and um the hierarchy um i think really helped like learn knowing that history helps it explain and give more context to bullying in japan so i think that that's cool that you did that yeah oh thanks yeah yeah um it's just it's just one of those things that i feel like needs to be talked about i'm glad that you are having a good time on the streams as well are you gonna play more tonight um no i'm probably gonna either continue tomorrow or Sometime later this week. It's tough because I want to I want to catch up and so we can have more in-depth conversations. For sure. But at the same time, we can totally just do this over a spoiler cast and I think that would be better. Um but uh yeah, I I I am going to be far behind you for for the rest of the game, Alisa, yeah. because I need to find time to play it for sure and stream it. It's going to be tough. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is the choice I've made though, because it's the first one that I've done this for. I've literally played every single one off stream before I started streaming, you know? And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is, this is just one of those things where I just have to be careful about um, when I stream it and like what what I do with it, uh, yes. Not 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 in a in a bad sense, but like when I stream it and and for how long? Because there are there were times in the past where I would just sit there for hours and play the game, but now I have to be mindful of my time and and all these other things. Yeah, like, no, that makes sense. Live. 
Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a fun experience. I don't know if I'll stream another Yakuza game live like this again because these games do take up a lot of time. And I, I there's a lot of moments where I'm like, there's things that I want to do, but then like I have to keep talking and, you know, there's that on-stream persona that I have to keep up as well. Yeah. But it's been a fun experience so far. I mean, uh, I I am enjoying every moment of both being it, having it on stream and, and playing the game as well. That's good. That's good. Maybe um one of the next times you have a stream, since I know I'm ahead now, I'll actually like watch it and <laughs> commentate too. Sure, if you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah. By all means, come through. All right. Um, Jeremy. I yeah. need to I need a st- uh, I got food delivered to my to my place. <laughs> I, I, nice. I, I I gotta get it. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna We'll be back in a second. I am, I'm here with my food. Um, I'm got my boba, and everything's good. I'm happy to hear that. What kind of boba did yes. you get? I got a matcha cream cheese. Ooh, amazing. Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I I guess I forgot to order boba, but you know what? That's okay. That's like an extra 300 calories anyways. <laughs> nice. That I, that I missed out on. So it's probably for the best. <laughs> right. Um, yes. I saw a photo uh, on Instagram that you went to Washington, D.C. D- that was the trip I took in July. Oh, uh, okay. I thought that was recently. I was like, damn, you went back? That's cool. That was a, that's definitely definitely an older picture. The thing is, is, like, I just uploaded things to, like, kind of my computer recently. Like, like, camera pictures and whatnot. And so, it's, like, cell phone pictures, camera pictures, and I was backing it up. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to update um, some of my socials right now. Well, I'm glad you had some time to get away back in July. And uh, are you, do you have any plans to take some more PTO soon? I think that's it for, like, in terms of, like, long vacations, that's it. I'm going to probably take, like, you know, the day before Thanksgiving or the day before, you know, like, uh, Christmas Eve, things like that. But I think now I'm banking my vacation for, I think, you know, I've joked about this before, Jeremy, where, like, man, like, sometime I'm going to, like, just take a whole month off. And now I'm planning to take a whole month off in sometime in 22. You should. You deserve it. Yeah. And hoping that Japan's open by then, hoping I can do somewhere else. Like I like I'm like I might actually travel to multiple places in that month. Yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to travel to like take a long vacation next year. Um, I'm probably gonna go see my folks in Hawaii at the end of December. Spend Christmas and New Year's with them. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, we're gonna we're trying to figure that out right now, um, and like where we're gonna stay because we have to take we're gonna be working. My brother and I are gonna be working from there, and we want to be able to take meetings, um, mm. you know, in in peace. And uh, we need like my my parents' place place is very small. They're, they're renting an apartment. It's not a permanent thing. They're they're trying to move out, mm. um, whenever they can, um, and go to their dream island, the big island. But mm-hmm. for the time being, they're renting a small place. And once they do, um, once they leave, you know, obviously that place will be vacant, but it's very small in the fact that there isn't enough space for all of us, like my dad included, to be taking meetings because he's still working from home. Um, and my, and so the, we have three of us. So he's not retired yet. No, he's not retired yet. And so there's three of us that need to have meetings that are going to be overlapping because, you know, we are all, my brother and I are going to be working on California time and he's got Hawaii time. And yeah, the, the time zones are gonna conflict so we just Mm -hmm. need some space to to do our work and um we're probably gonna do like a week of uh of working and then we're gonna spend the rest of it you know on vacation um i think that's a good split yeah yeah probably like three weeks total two weeks total in hawaii we're we're trying to figure that out first Mm -hmm. um but yeah so we uh yeah we're gonna do that and um yeah we're gonna see Gonna see uh, how that goes. Um, Hawaii might be in a different place during that time. We don't know yet. 
Um, it's true. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking forward to just going back there and spending a lot of time with family and not worrying about a lot of stuff, you know, just taking my mind off stressed from work and relaxing. Yes, totally, totally. I am going to try to play some games while I'm there. I have my gaming laptop ready to go. Um, and I have, uh, a bunch of games downloaded. I might stream from there if the internet connection is good. We'll see. I don't know. Still trying to figure all of this out. What games are you thinking of playing? Um, I'm looking at some single player stuff. Um, Resident Evils. I, I've always wanted to play through all the Resident Evils. I'm thinking about playing them next month because it's October. Mm -hmm. But if I don't mm -hmm. get to it, then I'll just play it in December. Um, yeah. I got Cyberpunk as well. want to try that. We'll see. It's probably fixed and like all the bugs aren't there anymore. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I Honestly, I haven't been keeping up with the news about it. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just like, eh. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, yeah. oh well. Yeah, I'm not, I like definitely not up to date with that game at all. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, Oh yeah, random aside, I was in Vallejo, California yesterday and I met up with friend of the podcast, JP. Oh! Yeah, we had some beer at Mare Island Brewery and we both attended. I've been there before, I think. Okay, yeah. Maybe. It was dope. It's a dope little spot. Is that the one by the ferry building? There, that is one of their their restaurants. The other one, the 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 proper brewery is on Mare Island itself. Oh, I see, I see. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. We went to the one on Mare Island. Um, there's a lot less people there. Um, the mm -hmm. because the one near the ferry building gets a lot more commuters who are coming back from work. Makes and, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was super dope, super chill. We were catching up, talking about you know just life and stuff and uh we we actually got both involved both of us are invited to a um mutual friend's birthday party so we, we got to hang out more at uh at our friend's house um very nice yeah yeah it was super fun um and he says hi by the way and we need to have him on the podcast sometime yes tell jp i said hi and we will actually talk on a podcast one day yeah 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 it's gonna be a good time oh yeah yes you know uh, speaking of beer um this past weekend, I dropped by Drake's, and Drake's is lo in a lot of locations in the Bay Area. You know, there's one, in, there's probably like a, like one in San Francisco, there, there's one in San Leandro, and all on top of that, it's like, because you're in the Bay Area, it's sold in all of our supermarkets, and so I was drinking Drake's, and yeah, um, that was my first time at a brewery in a while, mm. and it was a good vibe. They had cornhole. <laughs> Anytime I see cornhole, I never play it. But I always watch people play cornhole. And it's amusing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um. Also, my friend was talking to me about... We should go axe throwing one day. Uh, like, axe throwing is basically playing darts with an axe. And there's places that have an open bar and everything. And she was she was trying to sell me the story. And I'm just like, you mean to tell me that people are throwing axes and drinking? That's dangerous. <laughs> that, and I was like, yeah. oh, boy. <laughs> I low key, I'm, I'm pretty freaked out uh, by throwing axes in general. Yeah, because, me too. You could lose something. <laughs> uh, I'm just like very, very freaked out. I haven't gone over that fear yet. But the thing is, is like, even if I did get over that fear, I don't think I would ever do axe throwing as a drinking event. I would do axe throwing as kind of like a, hey, let's do this for an hour and <laughs> go home after. But like not drinking and throwing axes. That's like, I don't know. The American dream's weird. <laughs> so... Guns, axes, anything that can kill somebody. You know, we're all about yeah. it. Yep, pretty much. But she was suggesting that. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Podcast in one year, I will be officially an axe thrower at least once in my life. But still, I'll need to get over that. Not over it yet. No, I totally understand it. Blades freak me out too. Like throwing yeah. an axe that like it could bounce back. I've seen that happen before. Luckily, it didn't hit anybody. But it, there, it, if you throw it wrong or you hit the wrong thing, it could bounce back and then. Oh come yeah, back I'm not. I'm not gonna be around for that. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> like. 
No, thank you. Like, shooting a gun freaks me out. Shooting a bow and arrow freaks me out. Um, like, throwing an axe, throwing anything sharp and deadly, like, that freaks me out, too. I'm like... Don't drink and throw oh, axes. Man. Don't believe what people say. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, I, I hope that you get over that and that you're able to to do that successfully. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get over it, to be honest, Jeremy. <laughs> well, I mean, what if there's a zombie apocalypse? What if you need that skill? Oh, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's but fair. I mean, like, you know, you you never know. But at the same time, it's like it's like driving <laughs> stick shift. I'm like, I don't need this. But I'm like, what if the world ends? And I, the only car I can use is stick shift and no one's there to teach me. I am That's fair. shit out of luck. <laughs> yes. Shit out of luck. So I, that is like, honestly, driving stick shift scares me because it's one of those things I'm like, I'm going to ru- ruin my car if I keep trying to do this. Um, yes. Do you know how to drive stick? I, I feel like I like kind of know and I've tried it twice, but I wouldn't say I can confidently drive that's, stick. That's that's more than what I know, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're already two steps ahead of me. Um, uh, half the battle, I guess. Yeah, honestly, yeah. As long as you have a general understanding of how it works, which I do, but I I still haven't done it before. Like I think if you've tried it at least once or twice, that's that's enough. You know, man, life life is just full boost- of axes. <laughs> <laughs> Full of axes, like like booster shots. Like I got an email from my healthcare provider, like, "Hey, uh, you don't need a booster shot right now, but people sixty five and older do." I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." I'm surprised I haven't gotten a booster shot email yet either. Right? Or I mean, like me, not either, but I haven't gotten one yet. Mine just says like people who are eighteen through forty nine don't need it right now. I'm like, all right. <laughs> uh, no, that's fair. <laughs> What I've done is I've got the Nintendo Direct um, announcements that were on September. I don't know what date it was, but I'm just going to read down the list. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the one that I'm excited for the most. And it's not the Super Mario Brothers movie (laughs) with Chris Pratt as Mario. Um, let's talk about that Which... real quick. It was so weird. <laughs> what a weird cast. It's like Chris Pratt as Mario on your okay, Killer Joy's question. Peach. This is this has to be animated, right? You know, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you know what? Probably. But at the same time, look at the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Look at the Detective True. Pikachu movie. It could be both. We don't. Yeah. Know. It could, so so basically, all of these um, Nintendo uh, Mario universe characters would be the animated one, like the 3D animated ones, and then everything else is real life I'm, in Italy, I guess. In, I Italy, in Italy, in, it, <laughs> in Italy, <laughs> the in Mushroom Italy. Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I imagine that it's going to be all animated, but it's gonna be weird for me seeing. Keegan Michael Key as Toad. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, what else? Is, uh, yeah. Jack Black as Bowser. That okay. I'm not gonna lie. I think that one has potential because Jack Black ha- does decent voice work. Okay, this is okay. So this is basically how I sum up this casting. I think only two of these people I have I know have done voice work, and I'm just kind of like, okay, that's probably gonna be fine. And then everyone else, I'm like, I don't know about this list. <laughs> yeah. So, Chris Pratt is Mario. I'm gonna read. The, I'm gonna read the whole list. So we have Chris Pratt is Mario. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, interesting choice. You're, you're not. I, I, he is he gonna be Chris Pratt as Mario, or is he gonna be Chris Pratt with an Italian accent as Mario? We don't know yet. You see that? that those are right? all a lot of questions. Charlie Day is Luigi. Actually, that I find that okay. I don't know how that's going to look and sound, but okay, whatever. <laughs> so if Charlie Day... So the thing with Charlie Day casted as Luigi is if it was live action, it looks fine too. Like, right. I'm just like, okay, that actually, like, that also looks okay if it was live action and makes sense in animation terms as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I have high hopes for Charlie Day. Chris Pratt, I have questions, but I we'll see. We'll we'll see it we'll see a trailer first, you know. Yep. 
Anya we'll Taylor Joy. Is, also, Charlie Day is Italian too. So yeah, is he going to be like racist Italian, or is he going to be I don't know. like you see, Charlie these, Day? These are the questions I have. Who who knows? Right. Um, Anya Taylor Joy is Princess Peach. I I don't understand that casting, but it's uh, okay. <laughs> it's honestly the hype of Anya Taylor Joy, which she, by the way, she is a good actress, but but also voice work. Does she do voice? I mean, I don't know. I guess. How hard is, is it to do a peach voice to? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. You know, I got to yeah. see a trailer. Right? I don't know. Her, uh, yeah. her and with Chris Pratt, I'm like, all right, show me the trailer first. Yeah. Jack Black as, Brow- as Bowser. I'm I'm 50-50 on this one personally because everyone knows Bowser has like a deep, grunty voice, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned Jack Black can do voice acting. Right. I, I agree with that. Yes. So is he going to be Bowser as Jack Black? Is it going to be, sorry, is it is Jack Black going to be Bowser or is Bowser going to be Jack Black, you know? Yes. Like, we don't know. Like, I don't know. I, because, like, if Bowser's going to be, like, you know, school of rocking it everywhere, I'm going to be, like, I'm going to be concerned a little bit. I'll be like, this is not Bowser, you know? But at the same time, let me, sh- let me see a trailer first. Yes. Who knows? Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. This is perfect casting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> His laugh is already very Donkey Kong like. I think this this makes sense. Yep, right. This makes so much sense in my mind. I'm like, okay, yes, Seth Rogen, Donkey Kong. Okay. Um, Keegan Michael Key is Toad. I don't understand this casting at all. To be honest with you, Elisa. Who knows, Jeremy? Who knows? <laughs> like, <laughs> like why? Like he's a funny guy, <laughs> sure. But Toad is not really a funny character. Toad is just more like ah. He's like a really raspy yeah. voice. Is Keegan Michael Key gonna have to do that? Yeah, you see, that's the, the, so many questions about the voice <laughs> acting. Yeah, like so many questions. Yeah, yeah, and like th- this is the one where I'm like, okay, show me a trailer, but I don't, I don't know how convincing it's gonna be. Yeah. Um. Okay, Fred Armisen is Cranky Kong. Um, that's okay. I, he can be an old man. I think that's cool. The last three people are kind of like those actors who you always like. It's one. It's like, um, very much like a. You always see those actors in everything, yeah. but they're never actually the main character of the movie or the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson is Kamek. Yeah, that's fine. I think he'll be a good Kamek. He's a great voice actor. So sure. Yes. In fact. He is the only voice actor, I think, on this list. Uh, yeah, he's the only like actual voice actor. Everybody else, Correct. they're all <laughs> just actors and actresses. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and finally, we have Sebastian Maniscalco. Scal- Scalco. Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike. I do not know which character Spike is re- in relation to the Mario universe. But uh, sure, you know what? I don't know anything about this character, so and you know I don't know. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? You can. If you, you can, don't know, I don't know. Right. Here. <laughs> you can cast whoever you want. You can make Mike Keegan Michael Key that role. I would not mind. <laughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um. So yeah, those are our thoughts on the the Mario casting. Yes. But. Hey, you know what, Nintendo? Shigeru Miyamoto is behind this. We trust his judgment. He's he's um. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's really good at making games, but is he good at casting voices? We will see once the trailer drops. December 21st, 22. There you go. Release date of the movie. So you're, you're going to hear us talk about it once that trailer drops. And we're going to be like, all right, remember when we talked about this on podcast 177? So. 177, yes. Yeah. Market, bookmark it. <laughs> Refer, refer back to it if you want to. Refer back to you this. You have our full permission to be like, remember Jeremy <laughs> and Alisa when he talked about Keegan Michael Key as Toad? I'll be like, what the heck? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who knows? It, it could blow my socks off. So, you know, we'll see. Yes, yes, we shall see. Um. All right. So more stuff from the Nintendo conference that you wanted to go over. Y- Yes. Okay. So let's go. Let's read through a few of these. Uh, Splatoon Three: Return of the Mammalians um, single player campaign was announced. Um, more about Mario Party Superstars was announced. I think they just showed more in depth of like the 
the um courses or yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. the boards that are, I guess are being added. Um okay. This is one thing uh, okay, let me announce these few. Bayonetta 3 22 Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak Expansion Pack Summer of 22. Um Kirby and the Forgotten Land mm-hmm. Spring of 22. By the way, that one looks really cute. I it's been mm-hmm. a very very long time since I played Kirby. Same. Um, it's, but this is the first that, 3D Kirby too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It looks really, really cute, like super kawaii. So I, I, I might get it in spring. Um, okay, this is a little, this one I was a little confused about. Okay, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to announce um, a fighter on October fifth, but I wanted to clarify because the wording or the announcement it says it's the final DLC fighter. So like, like actually the final. DL like the final fighter is being added to ultimate like that's it like after october 5th we're never getting a fighter update ever again i you know that that's what seems to be the case they mentioned in the direct that this game has been out for three years now and they're right it has and oh god yeah i guess i guess you're right right yeah because the pandemic that was a year you know and we didn't really think about it because it happened so fast and or and, and, and in some cases it happened so so long so, uh, yeah, that like the game came out in December two thousand and eighteen. We had all of twenty nineteen to play it. We had twenty twenty, and now it's it's almost going to be three years. So, um, yeah, I you know, and they're wow, yeah, yeah, you are right that it's been three years. Yeah, so long. and I was surprised, and it makes sense. You know, like they can't keep supporting the game DLC wise because you know it. It this is like unfortunately the end of it uh usually an end of a game like this is life cycle and of course the smash community will will keep it alive forever but um i i am also shocked that this is the last dlc character because i thought that they would just keep going um to be honest with you because there's just so much to celebrate with different video game characters and oh including them 100 percent. yeah and because smash brothers is just that it's a celebration of video games and video game characters and like every single move set that a character has just has so much detail and love taken into care with it and like the the people who made the characters and made the uh uh, made the move sets for smash like they really love those characters and they studied them uh like even fr- from steve to banjo kazooie you know like everything is just it's beautiful um and uh i i just want to see who the last character is so who do you think it is who do you think they could put in there wow i i genuinely have no idea who the last character could be because like they even added um the Joker from Persona Five, which is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. I I I really don't know who they could possibly add. What about you? You know, it, the, part of me wants to say like Master Chief. Um, oh, that's a rumored. That's been a rumored one, right? Like that makes sense yeah. to me because Nintendo and Microsoft have have a pretty good relationship. I would say. Um, yes, they do because they have Banjo Kazooie already in the game, and Rare's owned by Microsoft. So yes. I don't see why they couldn't include Chief since they have Snake, who is also from a bunch of M-rated titles where he literally murders people. Um, yes. So I mean, in secret, <laughs> right? Right. And so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's it's fine. I, it's fine if they include the yeah. Chief. I mean, um, yeah. I, and, I, and to be honest, I think I think they should because they already have so many iconic characters. Um, if it's yes. not the Chief, then Crash Bandicoot. That would be wild. If they add Crash Bandicoot, um, you know, I think that PlayStation is slightly more protective over that one. But yeah, it would it would be pretty awesome if if we crossed um, platforms on that. I love Crash Bandicoot in general, so I, I like the more people know him, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's weird to me because. So Melee came out in 2001, and then Brawl came out in 2008, and then Ultimate. I mean, there was, there was a Wii version in 2014, and then Ultimate came out in 2018. And, all, you know, you are right. Three years have passed, but it's just like the climate of video games is so different now due to DLC and online that it's just like, what? A, I just feel like it, it's kind of a missed opportunity to not just like add a character like twice a year you know what i mean like how kind of more more in a sense of like how hard is that then again 
We question a lot of Nintendo things. How hard is that? And Nintendo doesn't care. So <laughs> I've already answered my own question. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, it, it, I uh, the, I was surprised when they said final DLC fighter. So um, I don't know. Does that mean? I wonder if they're gonna invest in like more maps or just not do anything at all. So <laughs> I think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it. You know, I I agree with what you're saying too. Like, they could totally, totally just like they could milk this for eight years until they make the next Smash. Absolutely, absolutely, and like, and they could yeah. just work out the licenses with other companies to have the characters come in. Like even nostalgic characters like Gex the Gecko, you know, like or like Chibi Robo, or just oh, Chibi Robo is owned by Nintendo, but like. You know, just having different characters from different franchises come in in a celebration of all things video games would be cool, you know? And watching them fight, like, that's the ultimate crossover. Um, But now you have um, a game like Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl or something like that, where it's a celebration of all Nickelodeon characters. And it's a competitor to Smash because they have a lot of the same movesets Smash does. Mm. And they're supporting it to include, like... They, they want to make it like a, a real fighting game. Like a, they want to make it into a competitive fighting game. Like they want to submit it so that it could be in Evo, you know, like they want, they want it. Yeah. I'm like, yo, that is so cool because I, and I, I kind of want it too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like I won't play it. I think I'll mostly watch it, but like, I just want, I want people, I, it's, I think it's really cool to see how there's this studio who's like, we want to make what smash was. But we want to make it better. Like we want to improve on it. We want to, re- we want to make people realize that you know, people want Smash, and even though Nintendo won't support it, we're gonna be better than Nintendo in a way. Yeah. And I really like that. You know, like if you can't, if you can't defeat them, then just build it yourself. You know, like just know. just do your own thing. And I think that is so cool. Like they include wave dashing, which is a, a technique where you can just like cancel out a move set and go directly into another move set and. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Like, yeah, it's. I hope they yeah. go hard in the paint. Yeah, like I want them to give Smash a run for its money because Smash has always been the king of party fighters. You know, Sony tried, failed. Nickelodeon tried before, and unfortunately, it didn't work out. But because they, because the developers are so in tune with the fighting game community and they understand what they want, they are just catering to them. You know, like most people in America are familiar with uh, with Nickelodeon characters and they understand that and they, they, they're banking on nostalgia but also the fact that people love fighting games and they want to play Smash but they want a developer supported Smash not one where Nintendo will just brush it under the rug or or not support the game anymore or like like not mess up fans you know like it's just it sucks it sucks when Nintendo does that but you know these this fighting game seems like it's made by fans for fans and i think that's what yes. counts the most exactly but yeah so hit them hard yeah Sorry. <laughs> so that's our that's our uh conclusion for who we think is going to be in the next smash character <laughs> yep um i'm excited the for all the other stuff too and yeah the yes. end, right um and oh and then last but not least okay first of all <laughs> Nintendo, this Nintendo Direct was weird because pretty much they were like, we're going to announce a Super Smash Fighter, but we're going to do it in October. And likewise with Animal Crossing, they were like, we're going to announce Brewster and a bunch of new features and furniture, but we're going to do it in a Direct in October. And so so it's like part of (laughs) what was funny about this Direct, it's like, we're announcing things so no one gets upset at us, but we're not ready to announce what it actually is. So to stay tuned to October. I was I was what? laughing at the the Brewster, <laughs> yeah. the Brewster announcement. They're like, hey, we're going to announce Brewster in October. I'm like, you just announced him, though. Why can't yeah. you tell us more right now? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, like, it, it, it's so funny because... I've never played New Leaf. I've never played with Brewster, but just because of the Animal Crossing subreddit, I know what Brewster looks like. Yeah. Because, because like for the last year, everyone's been wanting it. Yeah. And then it's so it's like everyone knows what Brewster is. Everyone knows what the pigeon looks like. So it's it was funny. It's like 
this is a this is this is a formality, so I don't get fined. But we're gonna <laughs> <Yeah>. st- <laughs> that was that's what Nintendo was doing. Right. This whole t- this whole Nintendo Direct was like, I'm here, so I don't get fined, and the and the real things are coming next month. I'm just like Nintendo's so ridiculous. They, oh my god, <laughs> see, Nintendo. See, they're contradicting themselves too. They usually say. We are going to announce something when it's ready to be announced. We don't like to tease for stuff. Y'all just went back on your word. You guys literally just did a <laughs> teaser for something that you said you were going to announce when you should have just announced it. Or you don't, have to, you don't have to tell us now. You could just show yeah. us in October. Like, like I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't expecting them to talk about anything Animal Crossing if unless it was going to come out in the next month or two. You know, not to tell us, hey... We're going to announce it in a month or two. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, what? <laughs> just announce it when you're ready. You don't have to, you don't have to like, tease us. Just, you're known for announcing things when it's ready to be announced, not when it's supposed to be ready to be announced. I know. Gosh, they're so ridiculous. That was so funny, though. Yeah, I was <laughs> laughing. I was like, is this a teaser for a teaser? <laughs> like, what? This is like watching a movie trailer, and in the beginning of the movie trailer, they show bits of that trailer. That doesn't make sense to me. Like Spider-Man, yes. like Spider-Man No Way Home, there's a bit of the trailer before the trailer. I'm like, is this a trailer before a trailer? Like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Come yeah. on. What what is this? Um I'm already hyped. <laughs> just 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 show me the, you know, this film know. is pending what for all audiences make? screen. Um, yeah. Yeah. But aside from that, the last thing I want to mention about the direct is I'm excited for the Sega games and the N64 games. Oh, the Nintendo 64 games. Yep. Yeah. And the controllers too. Yeah. Which yeah. That's cool. I, you know, I don't know if I will get any of that stuff. I'm still debating. Um, but if I do, I will definitely try to pick up some of those controllers. I know those are going to go so fast. So I might have to wait like six months. <laughs> I know you got to get, if you, if you want it for Christmas, you gotta be on top of it. Yep. N- know somebody that works at Target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> oh, did I tell you, Jeremy? Um, I'm legit going to attempt to get a PS5 for Christmas. Good luck. Oh man, I, I wish yeah. you all okay. the best. So the way this prompted because I was just um, you know, I was just chilling and then I saw an article and I was like Hey, we're still having a chip shortage, still having a global chip shortage. And I was just like, oh, God, should I just bite the bullet? (laughs) So this is basically I am going to make an attempt. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And it's like totally fine. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it is what it is. Um, like I can, like, I can totally wait. Like, I don't need to play Deathloop right now or any, any, like, Ratchet and Clank or whatever. Yeah. But. It's more just like the fact that they announced another, like the chip shortage is still extending. That's why I was like, oh boy, do I, am I, do I really need to, um, should I just do it? So yeah, we'll see. It's going to be like, it is, it's like, if it happens, it happens. So. Okay. I'm, I'm glad yeah. you have that mindset going into it yeah, because I, I, cause you know me, yeah. I, like, I, I, I'm not completely passionate about like, uh, I do want to play Deathloop. It seems like a lot of people on the Discord like it. Like it has good reviews. But I'm not like like I'm not like begging to play it at this at this very moment. You can no, play I'm, it on I'm Steam. Fine. You don't have to play it on PlayStation. Oh, I I am I think that my, it would be better on cuz I cuz I don't know if my game like I it'll be fine on my gaming laptop, but I think that it it would just be a better experience like me chilling and like watching it on my TV. No, that's fair. Plus, you have a new TV, so you've got to make use of it. Yeah, that, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, which is one of the which is one of the main reasons, just because like my TV's newer. So yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, I uh, I feel you on that. I actually the other day, two days ago, I was looking at where to find PS fives, and I was like, ah, well, I, of course, everywhere's sold out, and I'm probably not looking in the right places, but. Um, you know, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't need one right now. If I happen to come across one for MSRP, I might think about it. Um, because yes. I, I tried my friend's, uh, PlayStation five and wow, the controller is amazing. Like, you know, the game feel, the game feels so immersive when you're playing with the PS five controller. And I think it's cool. I'm still not mm-hmm. a fan of the two tone color. Gotta say, but I do like, I do like the UI. I like how smooth everything is. That SSD definitely brings out 
you know, the best of the hardware. And um, I'm just excited to see where it goes from now. But I'm really happy yeah. to hear you're just like, hey, if it doesn't happen, it, ha- it doesn't happen. You know, oh, it's yeah, all good. totally. You, yeah. you know me. I'm not like this is not like that big of a deal if I don't get it. Yeah, 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 for sure. If I miss out and a slim comes after that. It's even better. So, yep, that's how I feel too. I'm like, yo, PS5 yeah. <laughs> Slim, all right, I could fit it, you know, in a small shelf. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, going with the flow on this. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and those are all the Nintendo updates. Yeah, the main ones at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really have any other news topics I want to talk about. Uh, all good. I think that was it. Cool. Uh, we can move into questions now. We have one from yes. Dave97 on the Discord. Thank you, Dave, as always. Yeah, thank you so also, much, Dave. AKA Chariot Goblin. Right. So thank you again. <laughs> yeah, so Dave asks Is it just me or did RGG vastly improve the frame rate for this sequel? The sequel being Lost Judgment. I am playing on a PS4 Slim. I also like that they created new animations for most of the Essence Triangle attacks. Presentation feels slash looks smoother overall. Um, oh, definitely. Um, I think that um, it's funny that you point out the whole triangle thing because when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, there's an animation for the triangle. It's not just the triangle circle. It was like a s- triangle, and then you have a rotating wheel circle or- around it." I was like, "This is cool." So it's like they ad- they added a lot of like nicer looking like basically button it up i feel like yeah in a good way yeah um regarding frame rate i actually don't know <laughs> it looks the same to me <laughs> it's the same engine obviously um but i am enjoying every moment of it um and i don't know because also i have i'm on a base ps4 i'm on so within the base ps4 releases there's different serial numbers for the different consoles that were released depending on the bundle and there's like different clocks or something there's different hardware specs for every single one so i bought the one that came with the digital version of the last of us one and grand theft auto 5 a physical disc release um i don't know where that falls on ps4 hierarchy but i just know that it's a base ps4 and that the game looks exactly the same. However, I did notice, of course, all the different UI stuff, like the new animations and the the way that you press certain buttons and different quick time actions. I I did notice those look different. They look better, and um, I'm a huge fan of them. Unfortunately, though, I just can't tell about the frame rate, Dave, since um, it just looks the same to me. <laughs> it does look nice, though. It does. So, I yeah. Mean, yes. It's smooth. I got to say, it's smooth. It looks very cinematic. I have no problem with that. Yes. Um, I think it runs around 29, 30 frames per second on my PS4, maybe a little bit less, but I don't have an issue with that. I, I get used to it the more I play it, so it's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Uh, this is, this is a, I feel like this has been a little bit of an issue with RGG games, like, in previous years. This is, like, kind of, like, falling in the same category, but, man, like, the... The window area of where you can press X to just talk to someone or, like, um, open a door sometimes or um, order food is still small. Expand the window. <laughs> expand yeah. the area. Expand the area where um, where you can press X. A- aside from that, same old, same old, same old business in terms of, like, the UI and everything. Yeah. And it, it it's, like, totally fine. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yes. Well, that's the. B- by the way, yeah. um, just one on um, just one more, um, one more topic about the dance team. Okay. <laughs> okay, like the first song, it's called "Let's Dance." When like, when you play it, man, is I I feel like a star. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um. I don't it's not really a spoiler but basically like obviously this dance team is like Yagami you need to help us with the dance team and Yagami's like I don't know how to dance turns out this guy knows how to dance because you know we're in the Yakuza universe Mm. and 
he's and then he's like dancing to the very the very first song is called let's dance and i'm already like trying to find it to just listen to it on repeat hey so. i can't wait to hear it i love the music it's in lit. these games it's dope it's lit. <laughs> okay okay is it like k-pop lit or like what like what are we talking it's definitely um well it's kind of, we're definitely like j-poppy k-poppy like this is like j soul brothers kind of i Ooh, feel like okay okay yeah yeah, it, it's a it's a good it's a good um, Sega song. <laughs> all right, I I will, the, yeah, all right. I was already playing to find the the soundtrack to this game, so that's good. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, that is all. I that's my final topic about Lost Judgment for now. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, that's all I got as well. Um, if you would like to submit a comment or question, just like how Dave did. You can please go to our website, www.downtime.live. Please send us a comment or question by filling out the form, and it'll send directly to our email. If you'd rather send us an email directly, make sure you send us an email at contact at downtime.live. Again, that's contact at downtime.live, which will send us an email directly where we can read it on the podcast. Um, If you would like to connect with us, on a real-time basis, you can go to our Discord, wherever this podcast is hosted that allows links to be clicked. You can find the Discord link there or go to our website and scroll down to uh, where you can join our community by clicking on the word community and you can join the Discord that way where we talk about everything from the Yakuza and Judgment games to movies and TV shows. Uh, And you can disconnect with us and get to know us on a better level. Um... We uh, also are on Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, uh, and Apple Podcasts, which you can leave us a review for, uh, and we'll read that review on the podcast. We're also on YouTube. Um, We also have a Twitter, at Downtime Live, if you want to reach out to us directly. And we're also on Twitch. We have a Steam group. So, yeah, come, uh, come, come hang out with us. Come submit questions. Any and all questions are welcome. Does not have to be video game related. Uh, But yeah, so that's it. Anything else, Alisa? Nope. That's it. Awesome. Well, we are going to basically be covering Lost Judgment all of October. Mm -hmm. And you will get to hear all of our heart heart takes and our hot takes. Right. Hopefully, this game does not have another dungeon where Yagami and Hot Boys are just stuck on like the... 12th level of a basement and have to go up to street level hopefully we will never have to experience that ever again i know and if we right if we do jeremy oh my god yeah i'm yeah i mean i i hope that they removed that and just made space on the on the digital download file for the school yes (laughs) you know like honestly how dare they i still can't believe they did that in like how dare they right i love that like a dragon right (laughs) i just love that you and i played it once and we're like this sucks and we never played it ever again (laughs) never (laughs) again yeah we're like no (laughs) yeah as a reminder everyone after you do the after you do that dungeon in chapter six you never have to do that dungeon ever again to win you don't like you don't like you're totally fine. Completely so, optional. Completely optional. They even tell you, this is optional. I'm like, okay, my option is no, and I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> so traumatized. Yeah. Oh, I, God. They're like, hey, there's a big boss battle coming up. You can train at the dungeon. You know what? I'll go to the battle arena in Sotenbori. I don't need to go to this like, exactly. Ijincho dungeon. I would rather go to the battle arena. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I'll, Please. I'll play that battle arena all day. That was fun. The dungeon? That sucks so much. Oh, God, I know. Oh, so man. terrible. Yeah. But anyways, that's... You know what? If you want to hear us rant about it, you can listen to our spoiler cast where we just talk shit about that dungeon all day. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, you know, as a reminder, we basically cover everything Yakuza related. So if you see a podcast title that says Yakuza cast or Judgment cast, that podcast episode is dedicated to that game. Yes. So. And it is a spoiler cast. So be forewarned. Yes. yes. All right. All right. I hope everyone had a great time listening to our fresh takes on Lost Judgment. I hope everyone's enjoying playing it, and we will talk about it next week. All right. Take care. Stay safe, and see you later. Bye-bye. Peace.